Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We have some special guests on the line this morning. First and foremost, we have our sister on the line. Our leader. Our leader, Miss Tamika Mallory. Good morning, Tamika. Good morning, family. It's good to see y'all. I ain't been up here in a long time on The Breakfast Club. Absolutely. We need to get you back up here. I mean, if you're home in New York, you can come up here now because we are here, you know. Uh, y'all are in. Yeah, no. Well, she said, nah, I had yeah, COVID. Nah. So I can't get it. And right. I can't give it to anybody. When did you have COVID? Um, in Kentucky, messing around with Tamika and Bianca and Brianna's family. Oh, wow. We also have Tamika and Bianca, which is the family of Brianna Taylor on the line, too. So they gave you COVID. That's what you're trying to say? Yeah, but I, they never had it. It was we <laughs> <guys. laughs> that we I saw my son on a flight and I was like, where's Tamika? And he was like, she wasn't feeling well, you know, so she's a little under the weather. So that must've been when that happened. That's exactly when it happened. Everybody left me and went back to New York and I had to stay cause I, I wanted to quarantine where I was instead of traveling with it. And yeah, I had COVID, but a number of the people that we work with got it. And we did so many different things in Kentucky without getting it at all. Um, but then somebody came around who says she had headaches. And the next thing you know, it just spread like wildfire. And in fact, another young lady, so it could have been one of two people, but another young lady said that somebody reached out to her to say, hey, at your food giveaway, I gave, which was our food giveaway until freedom. She said, I, I gave you a hug and I just want you to know I tested positive for COVID the same day. Wow. So you need to get yourself checked. And sure enough, she had it. And then it spread through like wildfire. Wow. We had one How bad I, did it affect you? How, how bad did it affect your body? So I did, I'm blessed. Thank God that it wasn't to the point that I have seen. Like I said, one person who was with us, we had two to go to the hospital, even one person on our security team, but he was fine. The other person had fluid around her lungs. She mm. got pneumonia. It was a whole thing. She was sick for like a good two and a half months. With me, I was very, very tired. So you no know, matter what was going on, it was hard for me to get up and kind of get myself together. I never got the body aches. Linda got body aches. Um, Damn, Linda she, got it too? Linda got it too. Jeez, everybody man. had it. My son, everybody had it. Um, except Angelo. But Linda had body aches. She was a little tired, but not like me. Um, but the thing I had was a cough from hell. It was a terrible cough. It's still every now and then I had the cough. Um, so, you know, but we didn't, we, we were able to get back into everything, you know, in, a, in, in about a week or whatever, maybe almost two weeks, but everybody around us caught it just like that. It moves fast and people don't need to play with it because one thing that I noticed is that when I was like walking around or going up and down the stairs, the panting that I felt, and if I had like asthma on top of it or any type of respiratory issue, I wouldn't have been able to breathe. Wow. Now, what did you do? Did you take anything? Is there anything that you take or did you just quarantine? Man, let me tell you something. Did you take what Trump took? Between <laughs> that, I, I'm like Kamala Harris. Never <laughs> will I take anything that Trump takes. You didn't um, like he lies and says, anyway. But um, I, uh, Trade the Truth, sent, when I say sea moss, this, that, sour side, we had Dr. Savy stuff. We was taking so much stuff. I was feeling sick from taking all of the different <laughs> things to try to, to try to get well, mm -hmm. but it works. It does work to build your immune system up so that you can fight it. I was telling uh, a family member of mine who has just recently contracted it and she's dealing with, you know, at home, tired, you have to fight COVID. It's it's really like you got to get in the ring with it. You can't just lay down and let it take over your body because the more that you sit still and sort of wallow in it, it just gets worse and worse and worse. So not saying to go around people, but you can't, I know they say stay in the house and quarantine, but the more that you can at least just walk up and down your own block, keep your mask on, but you can't, you just got to, Linda used to be in the house like, <laughs> That's what Trump said. That's what Trump said. You was dancing just like Trump to me. <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's true. It's not a big deal. It is something nah. to take serious. It's a big deal. And stay away from your elderly family members. 
stay far away from them if you even think you might have it or may have been exposed to it because I'm telling you my mother is pa paralyzed on one side of her body and she's not able to turn over she had a stroke you guys know and so she's coming back though she's starting to walk and everything she's getting herself together but she can't just like turn over so if she caught COVID and she was choking from the cough or having breathing issues she would not be able to quickly you know get up or get herself together you don't want to give it to elderly because i can see how elderly people are passing away from it wow now we have uh, also tamika and bianca on the line um family members to brianna taylor good morning, good morning. Um, yes so how are y'all feeling with everything that's been happening i know it's been a lot it is extremely a lot but um we here we still standing we still fighting Mm -hmm. So what can be done? We saw the interview with Kenneth Walker and I know, and I was telling them I was crying when I was watching that interview. Absolutely. And I couldn't, you know, it was really hard for me to even, I couldn't even imagine how you must have felt watching that. Yeah. I, um, somebody ended up sending me a clip because I didn't get to watch it when it came on. And I was like, oh my God, why did somebody send this to me? But yeah, it was, it was hard to watch. How, how does it feel? Because so many people have so many different opinions. Yeah. And sometimes you just want to be like, yo, shut the F up. Like there's somebody yeah. grieving, there's families hurting, there's families dealing with it. What do you say to that and how do you deal with it? Um, she say okay. shut the F up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm good at, you know, like, uh, you want to get in the ring? Because uh, I'm with it. But, um, uh, you know, I just, I know who Brianna was. So mm -hmm. I try to just remember that and not have to fight with people's ignorance. And, you know, because Brianna, like I said, she's a better person than me. If it was left up to me, I'm out here whooping everybody. Right. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me ask y'all a question. How does the publicity of, of this situation affect the way y'all family grieves? That's got to be tough, um, right? It, it's terrible um, because I don't, to me, I personally don't feel like I've ever grieved. Like, I still feel like I'm still going through this and still trying to get everything figured out. So, um, and you got all these people in your face like, oh, we don't, I know this is hard and I don't want to have to ask you, but. And then ask you anyway. And, and yeah. yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. like, you know. And you and you guys are in an Airbnb, correct? Yeah. All right, because people will see that white family behind you and be like, who that white family behind you on that wall? <laughs> And it's just a frame. That ain't even the family. Oh, that's just a frame. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I said that too. I was like, they're going to take Yeah. Now, can you update us on what's going on with the Attorney General Daniel Cameron and this grand jury that wants to be able to speak out and talk about what really happened mm -hmm. with the details of the case that were presented to them? Um. Yes. Yeah, so... Um, there's a number of them wanting to talk about what didn't happen in that grand jury. Um, and Cameron is going through hell and high water trying to silence them all. So we're just kind of still waiting to see if they're going to be allowed to speak and, and what happens from there. Because, you know, hopefully, from I mean, once everything comes out, I would like to see that we get a new prosecutor, that, you know, something else has to happen because it, it just can't end there. You know, as black people, we're known, I don't want to say we're known, but we forgive easily a lot. You know, um, I'm not that way. Um, but how are you guys? Do you guys forgive the officers? Don't have, do it, Tamika and Bianca. It? Don't you do it. Look at their faces, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, black people, uh, we are some very forgiving people. But right now, oh, yeah. and, like, right now, I think we went from trying to get justice to, like, revenge at this point like we angry yeah and, uh, lied to like this is crazy yeah and uh like it's some stuff you can't forgive like right. i can forgive you for stepping on my shoe i cannot forgive you for murdering my child that's right you, like there's no no you you can't say sorry you can't ain't no amount of money ain't no 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 so 
And let me just make sure, because you know, the clip will be that Bianca said she wants yeah. revenge and they're going to kill cops. So that does yeah. not mean, or let me let you say in your own words, yeah. Bianca, yeah, Bianca. You say revenge and how you feel, what does that really mean? Not enough mm -hmm. Well, but when I mean revenge, I mean that I'm coming for these officers who, who, who murdered our baby. I want, you know, I want Joshua Jane. I, I, you know, I want Mary Shaw. I want, you know, Brent Hankerson. I want these people who was involved in her murder to be accountable. And that's what I meant for revenge. And not only therefore after this reform needs to happen. You know, there's a lot of things, like we got a lot of work to do. Like it, it's horrible. And, and the more, uh, it's a lot of stuff about this case that a lot of people are not aware of. And it is ugly from the beginning to the, to the current. Okay. Yeah. And I'm going to say, I don't think it's that they're not aware. People choose to believe what they want to believe. Mm -hmm. And that's if you can put it in black and white in front of their face, tattoo it on their forehead, and they'll still, you know, go with what they want to go with. So, because it helps and, them justify their bullshit, though. That's yeah, all. Right. Absolutely. And Bianca, I want to say that's not revenge, that's justice that you're asking for. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I'm not, I'm not out here. I mean, even though I would like to go burn down stuff and, you know, be, you know, act out, you know, I know it's a bigger purpose than that. You know what I mean? And I already said it from day one, I'm going to represent her in the best way I know how because she deserves that. You know what I mean? So. And Bianca, even if you want revenge, Tamika, don't get me wrong, Tamika's absolutely right. But even if you want revenge, you're allowed to feel that? Yeah, exactly. That's a real right. emotion. Right, yeah. Yeah. What I'm saying is what you're demanding is not, it's justice. Oh, right. it's it's just, not it. Yeah. yeah, it shouldn't happen. For you ladies, how hard is it, right, because there's a lot of people that are supportive of you, but mm -hmm. at the same time, there's people that do have negative things to say. So how do you let the good outweigh the bad? Like, how does that play out for y'all on a daily basis? Um, I try to remember that the people trying to judge me don't know me. The people trying to judge Brianna don't know her. So, um I can say a lot about people that I don't know, but it don't make it right or true. So right. I try to think about it in that aspect. But like you said, I, it's so many people that do support what's happening and, and that's willing to stand up, that's willing to put their lives on the line, that's willing to scream, cry, shout, fight. You know, so that's the thing I got to use for strength. You know, if these people that don't know us are willing to do this, how can we not? Right. Have y'all have, have y'all allowed yourself to feel feel any joy? It's hard. Like even like coming in, uh, catching the plane here last night. You know, it's our first time here in New York, and it's a beautiful city. But it's guilt. Like it's like that's me. For me, yeah. it's hard for me to enjoy anything because the moment I I feel any type of joy, then I'm I feel guilty. I feel you know, and and not as I know I didn't do anything wrong, but it's the fact that. How can I enjoy anything and she's not here? Right. Damn. What, what message do you think was sent to black people when, when Brett Hankinson was charged for the bullets that hit the wall and not for killing Brianna? That we still disrespected and not, uh, they still don't see us as human people. We're not valued. And uh, it was just the ultimate disrespect to me, but. What do you hope to see happen now moving forward? I know that we want policy changes. You said if some of those things they're implementing now would have been implemented previously, then Brianna would still be here today. So I think, you know, what else do you want to see happen? Can, I, just, can I jump in on that real quick? Mm -hmm. Tamika, I don't want to uh, speak on, over you, but, you know, when, when uh, Bianca was saying that there are so many things about this whole case that people don't necessarily know. So now when you ask the question, Angela, what do you want? And I know that Tamika will say that they want to see a new grand jury impaneled um, so that another prosecutor can present charges specifically on behalf of Breonna Taylor. Well, one of the things that people don't know about how elections have consequences when you elect certain people into office is that Daniel Cameron is on the committee that has to make the decision about impaneling a new grand jury. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. elections do have consequences because if you don't vote or if you do vote and you put certain people in place, they have that type of power that he can actually make a decision on whether or not this family gets justice from the rooter to the two that he's, he's involved in all aspects. And we can tell, we, we already know that he doesn't have this family's best interests at heart. 
right? It's going to make him look bad if this happens too, because you'll see everything that he did not present and how he covered everything up. Right, exactly. So why would you want that? He started out saying um, on the days after the announcement was made that he didn't care. Like, you know, people can speak if the jurors want to speak, you know, put the facts out there, open up the records, let everyone know what's going on. Next thing you know, he needs to delay the process to uh, give the transcripts uh, to the court. Uh, he wanted a week for what? I don't know, because they were able to get it done by that Friday. It was supposed to be Wednesday. The judge gave him until Friday, and he was able to get it done by then. So why would he want to wait a week, which we know was probably to redact information and to make sure that his bases were covered? Then he said again, he didn't mind if the grand jurors spoke about what took place, but yet he has filed two motions at this point to try to maintain the gag order. And even his second motion said um, that if if the judge did uh, grant the jurors uh, the ability to speak, that he wanted the order to be stayed until after an appeal. So they want to go to another court and try to fight to, to to overturn whatever the first judge says so that he can block it. Why would you go to all of those extents if you believe that you did a good job and that, you're, that, that the work that you did was professional and you presented all of the, the facts? His thorough report, right? Because that's what he said. I mean, he's going to do this thorough investigation. So, didn't y'all meet with the AG? Didn't y'all meet with him? Yeah, yeah. He how, set up. How, how was that conversation? He just blew smoke up y'all ass the whole time, basically. Basically, yeah, yeah basically. Absolutely. He sat there, and I think he even tried to muscle up a tear. And I think we got up and like, yeah, we're not going to sit here and look at this. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What are, What are some of the things when you said that there's things that you know, isn't out there some information? What are some things that we should know that haven't been presented? Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily think um, that nothing's not out there. I just think, of course, they've tried to, to turn everything that, that's been out there, you know, and clearly it's not working in their favor, you know. A lot of this stuff that they're trying to release or do, it comes, well, you're just now trying to investigate, Kenny. You're just now trying to investigate, Brianna. Those are the things that should have been done prior to you ever even going to that house. So it's just one shit. Sh Can I come? You can curse. Yeah, you can you express yourself however you want, you want to. <laughs> one shit show after another. So. And how is Kenneth doing? I know he's really close to the family still. So how is he holding well, up? He's here with us actually, but um. You know, tell Kenneth, hey, best. tell Kenneth he can't carry in New York now. That's oh, yeah, yeah. You definitely can't, can't carry me <laughs> Three years immediately. <laughs> You're going to jail, brother. You're going to jail. <laughs> when, they were, when they were at the airport yesterday, I, we're in Wisconsin until Freedom, my son, and Linda, and all of us, um, we're here with another family uh, who, um, several families. I, I, you know, we can't even talk about it today. We went to a dinner last night, and there were at least 10 families at the dinner whose children have been uh, killed um, at the hands of police. And wow. they're reason why we're here is specically about one officer, Officer Mensa, who has killed three people. Three really? black people have been killed by one officer, um, Rock Nation and Team Rock. They've been working on this. And while one of the- What? Eight, absolutely. One officer. A black man. A black what? officer. What? And while um, while we were out, now I lost my point. But while we were out yesterday um, at the the uh, pro uh, at the events, um, no, excuse me. While a protest was happening where one mother, uh, to, uh, Tracy Cole, was out protesting with her family about her son being killed, Alvin Cole, she was arrested. She was abused. She, mm. Her arm is in a sling. Her, her sister and other family members were out there and they were locked up at a peaceful or nonviolent, as we like to say, protest in Minnesota. So it's a lot of crazy things happening here. But I knew that Tamika and her family were at the airport getting ready to come to New York for this week's activities. And I was thinking to myself, when I was in Kentucky, I saw so many people with guns, like literally everybody got a gun in Kentucky, everybody. walking around clips and shotguns and, and AR-15s. It's yeah. more guns in Kentucky than I've ever seen in my life, up close and personal. And I was thinking to myself, Lord have mercy, please don't call me and tell me folks and went to the airport with the gun <laughs> oh accidentally. Like, I can't take it. <laughs> 
She had to say to at least three people, where are you going with that? Yeah. You know you can't. <laughs> <laughs> like, where are you going with that? It's like, throw out your bag. It's like, this ain't Kentucky no more. Y'all got to leave that here. So. Do, you, do you think y'all would move out of Kentucky? Oh, no, absolutely not. Um, I feel like Brianna has built a legacy there, so I refuse mm-hmm. to leave. I'm going to make sure they continue to see her face. They continue to see her, hear her name, so absolutely not. I mean, Bri- Brianna's a, a a martyr now. Is 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 does that does that bother you to hear? It does, but um, I you know, only thing I can think about is when this year started. Brianna said, "This is my year." Mm. Damn, yeah. Mm. Yeah. But what else can yeah. what else can we do to help more? Like what else can we do? And people out there listening that here's your story that just wants to do more and don't know what to do that can't might not be able to make it out to the protest, but say, hey, how can we help? What what, what do you tell people to do? Um, first of all, first and foremost, vote. People need to get out and vote. Um, but there's a number of things. There's you know uh, you can call the attorney general's office, the mayor's office, the what is that other one's name? <laughs> the governor. Like, there's a list of people, um, and I think that it's on Until Freedom's page um, of people that they can call and write into. And uh, there's a just like a lot of stuff going on on social media, different links that you can sign or petitions you can sign, like for a number of things. But um, but and one thing is like we're here uh, this week. We're doing a uh, rally will be here Saturday. Saturday, doing yeah. the rally, so that'll be um, awesome and um, just just don't get yeah. around and do nothing. Don't get involved yeah. and right. actually support. You can support. get support until freedom. Um, there's a number of links on there where people can donate because if you can't stand out here, money works too. And and until freedom does a lot of work, and it's not cheap work. So donate, please donate. To um, till freedom. Yes. Yeah, so on Saturday, people in New York City um, and the tri-state area can come to the rally that we're holding. Uh, what is so special about this particular rally is that we have linked the family of Eleanor Bumpers, which is a woman who in 1984 was killed by uh, NYPD in her home. Uh, she was an elderly woman who suffered from some mental health challenges. Everybody knew it. Of course, the, you know, the housing authority, they knew it. Uh, and the police went there and uh, they busted into her home and they killed her. And it was important for us, especially until Freedom being from New York, it's our city. We know the story of Eleanor Bumpers, that when we bring Breonna Taylor's family and when we continue to show uh, the atrocity that took place in Breonna Taylor's uh, case or in her life, because Breonna Taylor doesn't have a case. She didn't do anything. She's never had a case. But in the Breonna Taylor matter, it was important for us to show people that it's not a standalone issue. Instead, it's a long list of Black women whose lives have been taken at the hands of police. And Eleanor Bumpers is one of some of the first cases that people in New York City and around the country heard about. And her family will be there with us on Saturday as well. So we've been saying from Eleanor Bumpers to Breonna Taylor, we have to get out the vote. It does matter if you are on the streets protesting, you have got to take your protest to the polls, march right on into the polls. And we're telling people to vote early. New York City, the polls open on October 24th. We want people to vote. And some people say, well, what do these things have to do with one another? Again, elections matter. And the consequences of who gets elected will give you someone like Daniel Cameron, who stood and took an endorsement from the Fraternal Order of Police, which is the police union, the national union. They stood together. He was flanked by many of these officers, all a bunch of white men, to be clear. And he said out of his own mouth, I understand what this endorsement means. I know that I am to be an advocate and the voice for law enforcement. So why in the world would he ever go into uh, the, the, the grand jury proceedings and try to protect Brianna, he was there to do the job that he said 
publicly and loudly that he knows he was responsible for, which is to make sure that these officers were able to get off. And so, again, elections do matter. And when you, you know, everybody's so caught up in the Trump uh, Biden conversation and looking at the presidential piece, but there are other uh, uh, important issues down the ballot and other candidates that are running for office. So if you don't show up to the polls because you're protesting the president, you protesting yourself because you're going to miss out on the opportunity to vote for the senators and congressional members and other people who are down the ticket. You have to go to the polls and do not wait. Go early. Go early. Why is it important to go early? Well, we saw what happened in Virginia. The cord was supposedly cut by accident mm -hmm. and therefore on on the last day of voter registration, they couldn't register any more people because the system was down. Nobody would work this hard to take away your right to vote if it did not count and it did not matter. Nobody. When have you ever seen people trying to steal things that don't have value? Right. Your, vo your vote obviously has great value. And that's why it's important that these families, while they're all fighting for justice for their loved one, Brianna is gone. And there's nothing that we can do to bring her back. But what we can do is ensure that there are no more Brianna Taylors and that the community that Brianna comes from is, is held in a way where they feel uplifted. And one of those ways is for us to participate in the political process. To so me, Saturday, I, I, 2 o'clock, Saturday, 2 o'clock. I, 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 Did I get the information? No, where is it? Okay. It's at Columbus, um, Columbus Circle, 62nd Street um, and Columbus Circle that is right across from the Trump International Hotel, mm -hmm. Saturday, 2 p.m., be there, be early, be with us, and wear your walking shoes because I'm sure folks will break off to go and march after the rally is over. Tamika, you know, I, I, one, I love the name of the, your organization, Untell Freedom, and you said something just now and it made me think. Do you think we'll ever get to a point where we won't have any more Breonna Taylors, where we won't have any more George Floyd? Do you think we'll ever truly get to that point? So I don't know that we will get to the point, um, I'm about to say Lenar, because you know that's what I call you. That's but fine. Charlotte, <laughs> I don't think we're going to get to the point where there'll never be another, but we will get to the point where someone will be held accountable right. and we won't have to go through all of what uh, Tamika Palmer and her family are dealing with right now. That's all we want. We're right. saying that we know things will happen. You can't get rid of racism because it's ingrained in this country's culture. It is what it is. But what we can do is be in a society, a society that when we are harmed, that there are, uh, are consequences for that and that we're not treated as second class citizens. Right. When you commit a crime against us, you should have to pay for that crime, just like we do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys for calling and checking in. We appreciate it. And you can give yeah. us updates. You can call anytime you wanted to give us updates and tell us what's going on. Yeah. We'd love it to hear it from you than the press. Yeah, and and we love you so much and we appreciate you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tamika and Bianca, I am praying for you and your whole family. I want you all to get the healing you deserve. And I want you to know that it's perfectly okay to feel whatever it is that you're feeling. And I'm, I'm really sorry y'all had to endure that trauma. Thank you. All right. Bye, guys. See you later. Thank you, Tamika. Peace, Queens. Love y'all. See y'all. All right, peace. Love you.